so that we could love one another. So we can love one another. Rather than you become like me in order to love God through Jesus Christ, we come together to love God through Jesus Christ. It's the desire of Jesus Christ to empower us to love radically. And it took the crucifixion and it took the Holy Spirit to enable us to do that. How do we love radically? We don't. It starts with the work of Jesus Christ who destroys the hostility between humanity and God that there might be peace with God and then it happens through the power of a Holy Spirit that helps us overcome our differences because we struggle to overcome our differences. What do differences say to us? Fear, separation, isolation, anger, bitterness. Christ came to bring peace and then empowered us with a radical love that we might create one new humanity to worship God. It was based off a beautiful vision. So John, one of Jesus' closest companions, followed him all the way to the cross. He writes this mysterious letter called Revelation, but in this letter, God's given him a vision of heaven that he shares with us. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, and they were wearing white white robes, they were looking, they were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. It's amazing. This is the vision that Christ was pursuing to create for us, a vision of heaven where people, men and women from all languages, all cultures, joining together. And what I love is it's not the, uh, it doesn't abolish our differences. It brings us together with our differences. Worshiping the God and the creator who made us. A beautiful vision of what God desires for humanity that we call heaven and that Jesus died to create and God empowered us with his Holy Spirit in order to achieve. And that's what this is meant to be every Sunday morning. How do we do that? How do we do this? By doing everything in love. As we talked about last week. How do we partner with Christ to bring about this peace? How do we strive towards that little taste of heaven that John saw and shared with us? Do everything in love. It was love that drove Jesus to the cross. We discovered about the first church. They were infused with God's spirit and they began to love people that weren't like them. They began to move further and farther with his gospels, breaking down more barriers, creating more opportunities for people to come into the church. It was a remarkable movement. We'll talk about it as the weeks progress. It was a remarkable movement that eventually conquered the Roman Empire. They went from what we would call a ragtag team of under-resourced, persecuted men and women hiding somewhere praying because they didn't know what to do into such a powerful movement that within a couple of hundred years it became the official religion of the Roman Empire. And the argument, and I think it's a really good argument, it was the power of God that enabled us to love that did that. Again, we'll talk more about that. But you've got to see, we don't need to gather in fear. We've been empowered by God to break down barriers, overcome our differences, to create a community that Christ died for, to have a vision of heaven that we could become if we seize that with humility and devotion. So, this is what we call our discipleship model because it's not easy to do that. And because we as Americans like to strategize everything and make plans, We have a discipleship model. It's how we hire people, and it's how we help people grow as disciples of Christ. It's broken into four components. We want to help you encounter Christ in worship. We want you to have that vision of heaven. We want to help you grow in relationship with others. Because in that moment of growing in relationship with others, you're able to express love to people gathered gathered together in small groups as you pray for one another, encourage one another, hold each other accountable, and even challenge each other in their perspectives on the Bible and life. Love flows through the serve the world on mission. 
Why, why should we go out into the community to share our faith? Why should we do good for those who are our enemies? Because the love of Jesus Christ infuses us and moves us beyond the building into the community. Living generously, why should we give up our time, our energy? Why should we give up our resources? Because we love. This is what we're called to do, and it takes engagement in this to become the men and women that God has called, called us to be, the new humanity that he wants us to become. 